Okay, class, welcome back to English 1301. Uh, we are going to embark on the profiles essay. As you have seen, you've read my announcements that I've sent you in regards to the profile essay. I have sent you handouts in regards to the profile essay. <coughs> we have had um, assignments on the course policies and calendar about the uh, essay. Uh, now we're going to talk about, I'm going to lecture about it, I'm going to talk about the handouts, I'm going to talk about what you need to do for this essay, and we're also going to talk about, uh, once again, deadlines. So, the first message that I sent you and handout dealt with this and this is class once again uh, the profile essay it talks about creating a dominant impression and one of the things that's going to be happening within this uh, assignment is that you're going to learn and continue your journey with in regards to the profile it's about observing okay you observing someone basically <coughs> we're going to give you some options on that excuse me observe class interview where you will go and you will interview someone for a minimum of an hour and during that time you're going to take notes note taking so we observe we interview and ask questions you'll want to take about 10 questions with you and we note take and from that <clears throat> we will get once again class you will get the raw material the raw material that will become your profile essay and we have <coughs> excuse me a lot to do today in regards to this but basically remember observing how do we pay attention to what's going on around us your last essay the memoir which I'm grading seven days a week now and getting back to students one-on-one -on -one in regards to those essays. I've read some really good essays. Mixture of get grades from A- minus to F and everything in between. But that was about going inside and reflecting. This essay is about you going outside once again. That's how life becomes interesting when we're not thinking about ourselves all the time. But we go outside of ourselves. We put the spotlight once again on someone else. And that is where your essay is going to come from. Same length as last time. 700 to 1,000 words. Same format when you send it in. Uh, same process of going to the writing center class. And then, once again, I will grade those. So let's talk about those. Observing. In essence, you will go somewhere and you're going to pick a person, place, or activity to interview. You have to do the footwork. It has to be something for this essay where you put the footwork in of one hour. All right, These are doable essays, but they do take work. For example, in this opening handout, they talk about that. They talk about observing, interviewing, and note-taking. Okay. For this essay, there was in here a beautiful example of a profile essay by Molly O'Neill. She's a staff writer for the New York Times, and she went out to Los Angeles, and she went to UCLA, and she interviewed Dr. Susan M. Love. 
one of America's great, once again, doctors in regards to breast cancer. She did more intensely than what you're going to do. She most probably spent a couple of days with her in Los Angeles. Following her around, getting background information, uh, talking to her patients, being with her, observing her, interviewing, taking notes during the interview. Then looking over those notes and eventually writing a surgeon's war on breast cancer. A surgeon's war on breast cancer. So study that essay class. Study the way, once again, the writer is using quotations. Because quotes from the person you're interviewing is going to carry this essay. Okay, Make sure you're using them correctly as best as you can. Go to the writer's reference. Look at, once again, using dialogues and quotes. This is an example. Then class, also what I sent you was this. And this is our handout number two. And this is Betsy Buffo's interview with an artist. Now, Betsy Buffo is an English 1301 student. She had to write a profile for English 1301. Okay. And what did she do? She went to a cafe in Florida, in Ybor City, sat down at a cafe with this struggling artist by the name of Derek Washington. She interviewed him for an hour. She took notes during that time. Notes, 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 while she was interviewing him. Then she came back class and she wrote this essay. This is not a perfect essay, but it's a very good essay. It's a very good essay. And she had focus in it. And she wrote an interview with an artist. Profile. It's exactly what you're going to do for me. We're not there yet. We still at least have two weeks, two major weeks left until the deadline for this. Maybe a little longer. I think a little longer. My job as a professor to help you with that. In your mind from the handouts and from the homework, you should already be thinking once again, what am I going to do my profile on? I'm going to help you with that today. But remember, you have to do the footwork yourself okay so those are the first two study those study those class once again creating a dominant impression and then we have this final handout that I sent you which gives all the techniques profile handout number three it talks about once again uh, you know narrowing down it talks about focus it talks about creating <clears throat> a dominant impression. It talks about, once again, getting a focus for your essay. It talks about revising your essay class. We don't have to make this harder than it is, but these are all, once again, the major set of uh, handouts here talks about that, once again. So you'll be doing that in accordance with the course policies and calendar and in addition class in our course policies and calendar which I have here we had a fabulous once again reading from our textbook okay 245 to 253 <coughs> in our textbook which helps us and talks about and illuminates what I'm talking about here in regards to writing a profile. So once again, in its basis, focus like you did with your memoir. Your job is going to be soon thinking about who can I profile. A couple of things. No family members. Okay, You can't profile a family member. No mother or father. No boyfriend or girlfriend. 
no family members, okay? But other than that, I'm gonna give you a wide list of possibilities, right? And one of the things that you'll do is in the next week or so, you're gonna to have to A, decide who you're gonna interview, B, you wanna take 10 questions written out ahead of time, and we'll talk about those today to get them to talk. And then once you have your interview done, you have taken your notes, you've spent your hour with your person, then you will come back class once again. You'll sit down with your notes. You'll start thinking about your focus, how you're gonna focus this, and then you're gonna write a profile for me. 700 to 1,000 words. The format's gonna look exactly like your last essay. I'm working with students on that. I've been helping a lot of students this semester class. And once again, then you'll turn it into me, a first draft, a final draft, and a writing center verification. A lot of people have gotten that perfect so far. As I'm doing, if class, if you need to make adjustments as I'm working with you adjustments, remember it's all a work in progress, right? On how it turns in today. I was uh, grading essays this morning. I'm grading seven days a week. I pulled up a student's essay. No title on the essay. No name on the essay. So what could I do? I could flunk them, but no, I'm kind and gentle. A kind and gentle professor. Kicked it back to them. Put a title on this. Put your name on it in accordance, once again, to what a proper essay looks like, which I've shown you already a bunch of times. It's in your handout. Send it back to me and I'll grade it, right? Because I don't want to take off uh, points until it's perfect, okay? So you will take 10 questions into your into your interview that you're going to do. Okay, and we'll talk about some of those questions because one of the things I want to talk about today is class, who would make an interesting job? And you could do these over Zoom. You can do it, but you have to do it specifically for this essay. Or you could meet with a person and do it one-on-one. -on -one. You could do it in their home. You could do it at a restaurant. You could do it if it's gonna be a school teacher at the school, but you're gonna to have to put in the time. Not a lot of time, but an hour to get the work. So the question comes up, what would make an interesting uh, profile, okay? What sort of person would make an interesting profile? Class, anyone, first of all, with an interesting job. Anyone with an interesting job. So write that down. Be thinking about it. anyone with an interesting job would make a good profile. What's an interesting job? Say class a beekeeper. Okay. When I drive around El Paso still to this day, sometimes in the lower valley, if I'm down around Clint, if I'm in Fabens, if I'm in Socorro, cruising around there, getting my head straight, I'll see the signs, local honey for sale. You can interview a beekeeper. You could interview someone, once again, who's running a honey stand. It's their honey. And class, which one of your 10 questions could be for that person that you write down to get them talking in the interview What's the hardest day you've ever had as a beekeeper? Question number two. Have you ever been horribly stung by bees? Question number three. Is this a family business? As a kid, did you see yourself in this family business? Question four. Tell me about the process of being a beekeeper. Question number five. How long has your family been in this? Question number six. What education do you have? Question number seven. Do you see this honey being passed down to your children? Question number eight. You can save some of the wacky questions for the end.
question number eight. Do you ever dream of bees at night or have nightmares of bees at night? Class, questions like that to get the person talking. Your job in one hour is to hit it and quit it. Get them to talk, get the notes, get the background information, then get out of the story and go write your essay. Okay. Within that too, you'll want to have basic information. Now you may not use <clears throat> all of this information in your essay. But you want to, uh, once again, things like how old are they, where they went to high school, are they college educated, um, where did their parents come from, uh, you know, all these, these basic things. Are they married? Are they single? Do they have children? Are they divorced? All these things, class, can give us the background information so say, for example, you give us this full, as best as you can, portrait of a beekeeper. Like Betsy Buffo does as a 1301 student in an in interview with an artist. And like Molly O'Neill does, Molly O'Neill of the New York Times does when she spends time with Dr. Susan M. Love. That's a heavy interview. Because in that we see in her, um, a surgeon's war on breast cancer, we see that Dr. Susan M. Love has worked her ass off to become what she is. She's had to fight on every level. Had to fight in school at a time when a lot of women weren't in medical school. She had to deal with herself, finding out who she was sexually. She had to deal with her own faith at one time being on the path to becoming an Irish Catholic nun, right? All these things, struggle, struggle, struggle. And now, once again, she's a preeminent, the most probably one of the preeminent breast cancer surgeons in America. She's had to work. The question that we always need to ask ourselves in college and even out of college ourselves personally, how much are you going to have to work in life? How much am I going to have to work in life, right? Even at my age, even at my age class, I'm still working, working as a professor, working as a husband, working as a man, working as a father, and seriously importantly, working as a writer. You know, how how hard am I willing to stay in the game, right? To, to actualize my dreams, to become the best that I can become, right? Still on that journey, still hustling. Class, so a beekeeper, or who would may else make an interesting job that you could profile? A classic car restore class. Go hang out, at, uh, someone's doing restorations, a lot of good, a mechanic, a lot of good mechanics in El Paso, a lot on Alameda Street, <coughs> right over near, excuse me, where we are at the community college in the lower valley there. Class, a detective you could do. Uh, you could do a police officer. You could interview a border patrol agent. You know, border patrol agent. Good question. What's been, tell me about the wildest day on your job. Tell me about the toughest day on your job. Tell me about the best aspect of being a Border Patrol agent. Tell me what most probably is the worst aspect. All these things, class of people have to deal with once again in life. You could interview a nun, a Catholic nun or a priest class. No matter who you are or, or what you are or how you see things, once again, uh, to be married... To Jesus is a challenge. To be married to God is a challenge. But from the time I was a kid, I thought it was one of the greatest callings in the world because I thought I was going to become a priest. It didn't work out that way. But there was a time when I did. Asked a nun or a priest because it's challenging. It's challenging nowadays. I believe it's always been challenging, but what a calling, right? 
Catholic priest, a Catholic nun, or class maybe a minister at your church, maybe a Presbyterian minister, maybe a, a shaman in the desert, maybe a medicine man or a medicine woman, maybe a Buddhist priestess, maybe someone who is obsessed with the Hindu faith and has found solace in that path of Hindu, or maybe a, a friend of yours you could profile who's had a, you know, a major spiritual experience and, and feels the presence of God in their lives, right? You could write about that. Some professors won't let you write about that, but focus once again, class, focus. Yeah, focus could be spirit, you know, that relationship to God of someone who has found God or found <clears throat> spirituality. Or found Jesus. Sometimes they call him Jesus. Sometimes they call him Jesus. Or maybe he has a special relationship with the Virgin Mother. Or Mother of All Sorrows class. You could, you know, interview the person. Uh, class, how about a <clears throat> an auctioneer? Uh, they just we just finished the uh, El Paso County. Fair and livestock show. I went down there one day after the community college and thinking it was going to go on, but I must have missed it. How about a panhandler? Someone's panhandling on the street. Someone's homeless. Don't put yourself in danger. I've read some good profiles over the years where. A student has seen someone in the neighborhood panhandling for 10 years, <clears throat> living in a cardboard box in back of border town liquor store. Take them to Whataburger, sit down and interview them. My class could happen to any of us. I'm always respectful. You know, I'd ask the person, how'd you end up like this? What happened? You know, where do you see yourself in five years? Do you think you can get out of this predicament? Hundred thousand homeless people in LA right now, in LA County. It's a whole city into itself of being homeless. <clears throat> it's a tragedy, class. We're having some tough times in America. Class, how about a mariachi musician? You could even do a ride-along like on a Friday night with a mariachi musician. I love the mariachi. I always have. Been a couple times in El Paso where I broke down in tears listening to the mariachi. You know, trying to figure out what the hell they're singing about. A lot of times I know, partially. But it always hits me in a, in a heavy, especially when they're good. And I've heard a lot of mariachis that are good in El Paso and... I grew up with them in L.A., too, in Los Angeles. So, uh, either way, you know, you could ask a mariachi musician, tell me about the wildest night you've ever had as a mariachi musician. What happened at the gig? You know, they've seen it all. That's the beautiful thing. How about a teacher? <clears throat> Class, go back and interview a teacher that you went to school with in high school. You know, if you're in town and you went to one of the high schools here, you know, Montmore, Jefferson, El Paso High, Austin, Coronado, Franklin, Bowie, Pebble Hills, Eastwood, it goes on and on. <sighs> Class. Or maybe in the middle school. Go back and see if that teacher, see if, tell them, you know, proudly that you're in English 1301 now at the community college, you need to interview them. Tell people you only need an hour of their time. And I want you to respect them and they need to respect you because you're an English 1301 student and you're an adult. Class, could you interview a teacher? Yes. Could you interview, say, someone, excuse me, is working at a burger place, like a fast food restaurant? Yeah, if they put in some time there. 
like, you know, graveyard. Ask them what goes down at Whataburger at 2 a.m. when you're working. What have you seen? When is it busiest? What's the most frustrating aspect? Of it? Any job's a good job, especially if it's going to push you on to something better, right? I think Whataburger is a great job class, but as my student, I most probably don't want you flipping burgers at 60 there, right? It's all right if you are. I'm not judging it, but that's why we go to college to get an education or a manager at a, a burger place. How about a class of florist, someone that deals with flowers? You could interview a florist in town, you know, ask them the questions. Do they have a particular flower that they like the best. What's the most expensive flower they've ever dealt with or a rose? <coughs> What's the most expensive order they've ever handled? Class. A boat restorer, anyone prominent at a school could be administrator. Class, you could do a judge. You could do a, an attorney. You could interview a newspaper reporter. You could do a bishop. You could do someone who's a stripper or a male exotic dancer. It's legal, so you can do it. Talk to them, ask them, you know, what's the best ad you're going to do? You're going to have to ask them hard questions. What's the best aspect of this job? What's the toughest aspect? Class, you could do a bartender in a bar. Spend an hour with someone who's worked uh, for a few years as a bartender. Class of bouncer in a nightclub. Yes, good story. DJ, a radio DJ. I had a student a few years ago uh, that went to uh, Orbita in Juarez, the radio station, on a Friday night and interviewed the late night DJ at Orbita. Okay. And that late night DJ, um, really told my student what it was like to work as a late night DJ at Orbita, 106.7 on the FM dial. Now, here's where some of you, I'm not saying all of you, and don't beat yourself up um, if this does or doesn't apply to you. I had a student after class ask me Friday, hey, Mr. Wells, could I do my interview in Spanish? And I told him, absolutely yes, right? Absolutely yes. Because he can get into wor worlds where I couldn't get into, right? I mean, I can get into places, and I'm fairly confident about my rap in English. Este inglés en español. But, and I can do some rapping in Spanish. Este poquito en español. Este, yo, uh, Necesitar mucho trabajar en español por Mr. Welsh, Professor Welsh, the English professor. I need some work. My student has it going on. I said, don't take that for granted. You can do it in Spanish, but the whole essay will have to be written in English because I'm not a Spanish professor. I'm an English professor. Este profesor de inglés no... Professor de Espanol, although I've known and hung out with Spanish professors, right? It amazes me. So I said, yeah, absolutely, you could do that, right? And then I said, well, who are you thinking on uh, interviewing? And he said, uh, <clears throat> my friend's father owns Chilo's radiator service on Alameda. Can I go interview Chilo? Yes, 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 yes. That would make a great profile. Because I've gone by that place on my walks. Haven't done it yet this year, but sometimes I need to get my head straight. In the old days at the community college, I drive a few blocks away, man, hop the fence, and I'm on Alameda. I'll walk Alameda and trip out, right? Up and down, getting some exercise. Seeing all the sights, going by Chilo's Radiators. Service, Javier's used car lot. Can you interview Javier? Yes. Class. All those things. 
So those are those are all examples of, of what you could do, and maybe more. Okay, you got to think about it. students come up. I had a student come up and you say, Mr. Welsh, I want to do an interview of the janitor at the community college. Can I do it? I, absolutely, yes. Right. Good question to ask the janitor. What's the nastiest thing you've ever found in the toilet at the community college? Tell me about your hardest day at work. What is the wildest thing that you've ever seen in the bathroom of the janitor? Once again, it's a necessary job, class. I had a student interview uh, one of the janitors and, and write a uh, profile. So those are all possibilities, class. All is all that you do, what you want. No family member, no boyfriend or girlfriend, no mom and dad, no aunt, but anything else. Student the other day in class said, Mr. Welsh, how about my friend? My good friend is right now, he's in his second year in the Army, and he's stationed in Fort Bragg. Can I interview him? I said, yes. I've never met a boring soldier. They have stories. No matter whether they like the Army or hate the Army, soldier has stories. A Navy man has Navy stories. A boatman class or woman. Soldier man or woman. So what he says, Mr. Welsh, I'm going to do it over Zoom, my interview. Can I? Absolutely, yes. Do it over Zoom. Be better in person, but that's okay. That's okay. I had a student last semester. Gosh, she's a really good student. She had a friend who was in Austria on some with some mission group. But she was also in school over there. And she wrote me a beautiful profile of a friend of hers who has spent the last three years in Austria on like a Christian mission reach out thing it was good it was good class you could do places now if you do a profile of a place you're going to need to talk to a person in that place though to bring it alive but still it could be loosely centered around a place. So something like an orphanage. An orphanage where orphans are. Talk to the director. Spend an hour with them. Maybe take a tour of the orphanage. A tanning salon. Talk to the manager. Talk to somebody who works there. Ask them why we need a tanning salon in El Paso when every day is sunny. Class a spa, like a hell spa. Talk to the manager, talk to one of the workers, maybe even talk to someone who's been going there. How about the gym, class? Find someone who's addicted to the gym. Talk to them, ask them, what do they get out about going to the gym? Right? Exercise is great. Talk to a manager at the gym. It's so long ago, class, it was a trip. I've been in El Paso so many years that when I moved here, there was no gyms. And that was only 28 years ago. <clears throat> the only gym... In town, I was stunned at that time because in L.A., there's gyms on every corner 30 years ago. When I moved into town, the only gym here was YMCA. And that was all right. And then, wow, there are a lot of gyms now in El Paso. There were boxing gyms, of course. There was the San Juan. One of the oldest boxing gyms in El Paso. I used to go down there. And watch the fighters train. I still like going to gyms, boxing gyms. When I need strength, I'll watch boxing videos. I have to remember that any of us can get knocked out. The question is, how do we get back up? You can interview a fighter. I saw one of my ex-students the other day who was a Golden Gloves fighter I taught years ago. And now he's training people. Uh... I think I taught him 10 years ago. He hit me up. He was in uh, Walgreens buying a 64 pack of beer. And I was like, look at you. I'm going to get a little thirst on. What, what, what was he buying? I forget what it was. I think it was Michelob Ultra. Hey, Mr. Welsh. I looked at him. I said, how you doing, man? 
The boxing thing didn't quite work out for him, but he, he did it. He did some golden gloves. He noticed his nose was a little different. He had it broken about three or four times. But you know, man, bottom line is he's still alive. He got through English 1301. He did the boxing thing. He's helping other students box. He's got a 64 pack of uh, Michelob Ultra. I almost said, could you give me one right out of the case? Just joking, class. Just wants to drink anymore. But it was good seeing him. So, a boxer. You go down to a boxing gym. There's a bunch of them in town now. There was one I went to this summer on the west side. And I was thinking that I wanted to start training again. I wanted to box and uh, at least train. You know, I don't know if I want to get hit in the head. And, and I most probably, uh, you know, anybody take me out. But it's good training. But it was too small. It was brand new. It was packed. And it was tiny. And COVID was still kind of on a bit. And I'm thinking, uh, but they had some good trainers there. I was like, this is a little too tight for me. But I enjoyed seeing it, you know. The sweet science, they call it, class. The sweet science. Still dig it. It's tough, man. Places. Boxing gym. Regular gym. Spawn. A spa. Class, you could profile a pawn shop. Go into a pawn shop. Go into Benny's Pawn and talk to Benny. Right? There's some good pawn shops in El Paso. Uh, go down to the roller rink. Do a little roller skating and, and talk to the owner. Class, go to the hospital or waiting room at the hospital. Talk to a nurse. Interview a nurse. Interview a doctor. Class. <coughs> interview a psychiatrist. Excuse me. Class, do an interview of the uh, manager at the most expensive restaurant in town. Go to a bookstore. Used bookstore. Once again. Get somebody that works at a bookstore. Interview them. Class, you go to a convent. A convent where nuns live. Interview, see what the convent is. Talk to a nun. Class, you go to a bakery, right? Bakeries are fabulous. Last week, uh, what happened? My uh, wife wanted to do something over in Central on Piedras, which in Espanol means the rocks. So I was over on Piedras, and I said, you know what? I'm going to hit up Gussie's. She had the car, and I said, I'm going to walk down the street and hit Gussie's. Because I like Gussie's tamales. We used to get them for years, and then we quit getting them. I don't know why. Somebody said they weren't any good. And I always remember Gussie's tamales is good, but it's Gussie's tamales and bakery. So I went in there, and uh, I got a dozen of the Puerco Rojo tamales red pork and took them home. I heated a couple of those bad boys up for lunch. They were fantastic. Class, so you could do an interview of Gussie and Bakery. And they brought those things out and I'm like, man, that's a fine tamale. I love being in El Paso. I hadn't had a tamale in a few months. Class. My dad used to steam tamales in LA when I was a kid. He had a steamer and everything. I think the tamales that we get here are a little better than the ones he got in L.A. It's all right. It's all good. My dad loved tamales. God rest his soul. Class. Auction house. Nightclub. Museum. You can have to talk to a person. Interview them. But the focus could be around the actual place. Or class, you could do like an activity. There's a Frisbee tournament going on. You could go out, <coughs> check it out, excuse me, and then talk to one of the participants for an hour. Maybe the organizer of it. A Wheels on meal, Meals project. Poetry reading. Go to a literary reading. Talk to the organizer. Talk to one of the readers. Talk to them about their work. Rock climbing at Waco Tanks. Go out to Waco Tanks. I've met rock climbers out there from all over the world. Interview one. Union organizing a door-to-door -door campaign for community change. You could talk to one of the organizers one, once again. 
class, you could also interview one of your, you know, you can't interview me, but you could interview one of your professors at the college, right? I read some good, um, a, a tailor, class of seamstress, somebody who sews clothes. That's a great art, once again. Um, so, that's where we are. Now, let, let's just talk about what's next for you. So we got some deadlines coming up. Let's talk about this. So let's go first class. That was Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes. I got section 11918, 11923, and 11934. So let's look at this deadline for this. You don't have to worry about anything on here except for what I'm telling you now in this due date. So, once again, a little adjustment to this. <coughs> Your due date for those three classes I just mentioned, according to our course policies and calendar, is October 12th. So, today's the 26th. You know, it's over two weeks. You got time. But time slips away. Because once again, when you turn it in, you'll turn in your first draft, you'll turn in your correctly formatted final draft, and you will have taken this to the writing center. Class, I had some students this semester tell me when they go to the writing center in person in one day, they can get their essay sometime turned around in 20 minutes. We're here to help. We're here to help. First draft, final draft, writing center verification. You send it to me and I'll grade it. I'll grade it, class. The 12th, that is your deadline. So I've got plenty of time. Now that we've had this <clears throat> lecture, decide who you're going to do. Here's the next thing that I would do. Decide what you're going to do. Set it up. Nail the interview as soon as possible. Set up the date and time with the person. Tell me you only need an hour of their time. It's got to be someone for this essay. As I just mentioned, it's got to be someone alive. Get that out of the way so you can then get to the writing process of it. And be good to yourself. Take your 10 questions in. Sit down. Will it be challenging? Yes. Have you ever done anything like this? Maybe yes, maybe no. The first time I did it, I was in college. First time I did it, I was 22 years old. What did I think? I was tripping. People are talking to me. I'm, I'm writing. I'm writing their answers. I'm saying, wow, people really do like to talk. Their lives are fascinating. This is interesting. And then from that, I made a living for it for years, interviewing people and writing stories on Adam as a daily newspaper reporter. It's great. Okay. Observe. Interview. Questions. Note taking. <clears throat> Excuse me, you work on those the rest of your life. So, October 12th, going to be your deadline. These are my in-class, these are my on-campus classes. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the college. 11918, 11923, 11934. Okay, now. My two online classes. 11901-13855, your deadline. Don't worry about anything else. Just worry about this, this, this deadline coming up. Your deadline for this class, since it's a Tuesday, Thursday class, is going to be the 18th October. The 18th of October. And so don't worry about anything else. That's the only thing I need from you is on the 18th of October, you'll be doing these drafts. You'll be working on these drafts, draft. You'll hand this in on the 18th of October. So that's some time you have. My other three classes, the 12th of October. That's some time you have. Once again, set it up. <clears throat> set it up. Call up your person, text them, say, I'll only need an hour of your time. Can we set it up this week? Interview them. If you're going to do it over Zoom, do it over Zoom. Set it up this week. Get that part of it done. 
take your 10 questions in once again. Say you're going to do a pawn shop. What's the strangest thing that's ever been pawned here? What's the most expensive item that's ever been pawned here? Have you ever been held up <clears throat> with someone trying to rip you off? What's the strangest thing that's ever happened in the pawn shop? Why is there money in a pawn shop? How much money? Do you see yourself working here in five years? How did you get into the pawn in business? That's going to get a pawn shop owner or someone who works there talking, right? Talking. <clears throat> used bookstore. Question to whoever's working at the used bookstore or the new bookstore. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened? How many times have you seen people try and steal books? Has anything unquestionable ever happened in the book aisles? Have you ever found anything in a book? Do you read yourself? How much do you read? How much do you love books? Class, and get someone talking. One hour, get them talking. Then, once again, get all that other information. Where they went to school, how old they are, are they married, are they single? Where they went to college, did they go to college? Sometimes, class, the focus of the language is going to be language. Sometimes... You know, in El Paso, everyone has got their own relationship to the language. And that's fantastic. That's why I love it here. You know, bookshop. How much do you speak to people in Spanish? How much do you speak in English? You know, what's your relationship to the English language? What's your relationship to the Spanish language? And those aren't the only languages, of course. But those are the two major ones here. <clears throat> Okay, good, 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 good. So class, right, let's keep it simple. Go back and make sure that you've digested these handouts and you're looking at them. Look at the way they approach it. You'll be thinking about your own approach. How am I going to focus this essay on this person? Once again, if you're interviewing a soldier, maybe that's going to be the profile of the essay, a soldier, a combatant. You talk about what happened at war, possibly. How a person deals with war. Once again, look at that as, once again in here, profiles creating a dominant impression. You create a dominant impression in your writing by whoever, whatever the focus is going to be. If it's a baker, okay, you could talk about their relationship to bread. Or maybe in that interview of the baker, Maybe something will also come up. Like maybe that baker on the side is a musician who's dedicated his life to like uh, being a jazz saxophonist. That's already interesting. A jazz saxophonist baker, right? Focus. And then class, once again, all these techniques on this third handout, which I just recently sent you on creating a profile. So class, there we are. So remember those deadlines. Remember that time. Uh, <clears throat> we've had a great class today. And, and we'll take it uh, from, from there. And once again, class, to just wrap up, I am <clears throat> grading your profiles I mean, your memoir is seven days a week. If you need to make adjustments, make those adjustments. Remember, sometimes at the beginning of the semester, it takes students a bit to learn the format and get things right. But once you get them right, you'll be set the rest of your life, you know, with this format. I had an essay that I was grading this morning that um, had a bold title on it. The name and everything was all jacked up on this side. And then the student hadn't indented their paragraphs. And then in some paragraphs, there was this much white space between each paragraph. And I'm like, you know what? I could, you know, just take off massive points for something like that. But I don't want to do that. So I just wrote to the student. I said, get out the correct essay format. Hand out an essay. Study it. Fix your essay because it was all jacked up and looked horrible. Just fix the format on it. It may only take them five minutes to do it. Because they had everything else. 
They had the Ryan Center for verification. They had the first draft. I said, fix this. Get this back to me once again, and uh, I'll grade it. So they'll do that class because they, you know, it's it's a learning process of trying to help them. Okay, very good class. Well, with that said, class, we'll uh, we'll leave it there uh, for now. Uh, I'll leave you as the Irish always like to leave people when they say good luck, good luck, good luck, and I'm certainly. I'm uh, wishing you luck at the community college. I'm wishing you good luck with your studies. And uh, with that said, say, stay safe, stay well, be kind and good to yourself. Class, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.